Hey everyone, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com and in this video I'm going to be doing a sponsored review of the Oxygen 2.1 release and in this release we're going to be going over some of the many different updates that they've done. Now they've done quite a few big updates to their builder here and I'm just going to cover a few of them in this video. I'm going to cover things like how to change the gradients on a background of pages, how to use the headers for a sticky header or a secondary header, and then I'm also going to go over how to use the slider element that they've added now as well, where you can add all kinds of things into the slider and really manipulate it and edit it the way that you want. So I'm going to go over those three things in this video, and there's a whole lot more where you can learn about Oxygen on OxygenBuilder.com, where you can also purchase it. And then you can learn all about Oxygen with these documentation and tutorials that they have on this page. And... You can also find more information on their Facebook page, which is really helpful. It has thousands of members on their Facebook page in their private group. And there you can communicate with like-minded members and get a hang or get a feel for how Oxygen's Builder works and get help if you do get stuck. And additionally, they have even more resources on their own YouTube channel. So I wanted to point these things out before we actually dive in to using this tool and give you some other points of reference that you can use for other help, which is a huge plus with this builder. So let's dive into it now. To get started, we can actually dive in. I'm just gonna show you right now, I've all I've done is edit a few images in media. I already opened a page here, and we're gonna get started with this blank canvas. So to make a header with the header builder here, what we're gonna to need to do is we'll go to add, and then we can go to where it says helpers, then click header builder. So what I like about this is there's a lot of functionality that you can put in place with these header builders. So within this area up here, we have header rows or header areas within the builder itself. So there's going to be a left header, a center header, and a right header. So it's actually pretty easy to manipulate where you want the actual content to go. So let's just go through the process of adding a logo so you can kind of see how it is. And most logos are either on the left side or centered in general so let's just go through that if we go to add and then we go to where it says basics right here and then we can go to where it says image and click on that if we go to where it says browse over here for image URL we can click on that go to media library and then we can pick an image for our logo so I'm just gonna click this one right here and put it in place and that's WP with Tom that's kind of the new logo that I've been experimenting with. I'm probably going to make it white on a transparent background, but that's neither here nor there. Now, once we have that dropped in, we can change the location for where the logo is actually at. If you want to change the size, though, however, you can change the height right here. So let's just say you want it to be 35 pixels. You can make it pretty small like that rather than that big size that it came in there to begin with maybe I'll make it like 60 looks pretty good in my case so it's easy to adjust you can see it adjust in live time right there it's pretty nice now let's say you want to move it you can just drag it and drop it right over here and now it's in the center you can drag it and drop it over here on the right so it's very easy to manipulate where you actually put the logo itself within the header you can see how easy it is just by dragging it and dropping it right there now let's just add and go through adding a menu so if we just go to where it says add again we'll go to wordpress and then we can just go to where it says menu right here the first option and then you see right here it gives you this example menu now i don't have a menu in place right now so it's just showing that by default and now if i click on this area itself i can actually make some changes so let's just say i want to move this over a little bit i can drag it over and change the location I can space it out you see right here it gets smaller when I do that when I drag it so it can affect how big the location is right there that you have to work with and you can also push it over this way as well so that's a way that you can almost kind of center it and then if you wanted to you can have more over here you can have something else over there or you can move this all the way over to the right side for the most part as well and have the logo over there and then the menu on the right side now let's just say we wanted to change the height of this text here in the menu you can go right here and change it in this area so let's just say we want it to be 20 and then it will be a little bit more of a full menu here 
when you see the sizing of it. And you can change the text alignment down here as well if need be. So it's really easy to work within and maneuver those around a little bit. Now let's just go and add some other features here. So you can actually add a secondary menu now on here. So first let's just go up here and if we click on this header row right here, we can change the spacing and we can actually bump this down a little bit so it's not all the way up here with this logo, for example. So let's just go and add a secondary header up here. If we go to where it says add and then we go to helpers, we can go to social icons and we can add those up here in the top as well or we can have it in the right side. It's either or in this case and if we want to we can change the links over here as well and change the icon size so let's just make them smaller so they fit a little bit better in line with the rest of what's in here for us now you can choose space between the icons as well if you want to have a little space between them or almost no space it's actually really easy to line up and then you can also change the icon color background hover color there's a lot of things you can change within this section so if we go back here and go to add and we just click header builder here we have this second option now if we go to where it says structure we should be able to bring this header builder above the other one so right now we have it below let's try to bring it up here and now it's at the top and now if you want to you can add other elements to this higher header here so let's just uh, say we want to add a basic text option so if we go to basics and let's just say we want text here we could add a phone number let's just say we'll just type in here uh, reach us at 1-800-1-800 wordpress and then you can resize this as well so if you want you can easily change the size of this in the font size right here and you could have this at the top of your menu. You can move these social media icons up there. You can have the logo centered and then have, um, you can just basically do it any way you want. You can, but I would suggest maybe having like a phone number and your social media icons up here and then maybe the logo and the links itself for the menu on the next section below here. So there's a lot of different possibilities that you can use with this header here and there's a, way, a lot of ways that you can really manipulate it to look good. Now, if you want to put it in place, you can just click Save here to easily put that in place. Now, if you want to go over how to make it responsive or something like that, you can go right over here and check what it looks like on different devices, what the menu looks like. So right here, it collapses. Kind of doesn't look good, in my opinion, to have it over there and then collapsed. So maybe you want to remove the social media icons entirely in this section. So if you click on that, then you click the delete button right there we'll get rid of it and then you can drag this over onto the right side and have that drop down menu there maybe you don't want this secondary option this secondary menu on a smaller device so you can get rid of that whole section right here and then you can also delete this header row right here and be left with just the logo and the sandwiched menu here so when they click on the menu they see this when it's on a smaller device and you can view that on different size devices here and put into effect changes that you might want depending on the actual size of the device maybe you want to change how the logo looks on this device it's pretty smushed while on this device it's more spread out and it looks a little bit better so there's a lot of different options you can use the header for here and this header builder I'm going to just make it the default size for the all devices size here and then I'm going to move on to the next thing that I wanted to cover. So the next thing that I wanted to get into is the slider here. So I'm actually going to delete this whole area itself here and then just start with this fresh canvas again. So to get started with a slider, let's just go to add and then we go to where it says helpers. And now if we scroll down here, we'll go to slider. And the slider feature here has a lot of different options that we can use. So what I would recommend here is if we go over to where it says structure, I'm just going to open it up and show you what it looks like. We have three slides by default in the slider area. And right here, I'm going to just make this a lot bigger because it's only the size of the header right now. So if we pull it down, we can see it's a lot bigger area now. And if we wanted to, we can go to where it says styling. 
and we can change things like the timing on it and things like that. Now let's actually add in a basic thing here. So if we go to add basics and let's just find an image, we'll click image. And now we have this image placeholder here and I'm just going to browse and pull an image from our images that I loaded here already. And I'm just going to select that image. Now you can see right here, you can choose the width. You can write alt text for it. And on the sides, you have this slider button here. Now, if we go here, slide two, I'm going to add another image here and use a different one just so we can see what it looks like. There's the second one. And if we slide over, it will go to slide three. It tells you which slide you're on right here on the right side. I'm going to add a third image for our image slider. Go to browse. And maybe I'll just use this one right here and select image. And there we go. There's the third image here. Once we go back to the site itself, we can see that. And we have this extra space down here. I'm going to just drag it up and make it align with the picture itself. So we can see right here, if we go one by one through these images, they're a little bit different in sizing. So maybe I can drag this down and resize the image based on the height that I want to make them all the same height in pixels. So that's something you could do if you want. I'm not going to go through that process right now. I more so wanted to go through how to actually edit the slides within the slider. So to go from this actual image that we're on back to the slider area itself for the main slider, we can just click here on the right where it says slider and go back to styling here. And we can choose things like the animation speed. If we go for, if it goes into like a fade mode and it goes into this fade after that amount of time, you can choose arrows. If you want to have arrows lighter or darker, and let's just go with lighter here just to see what the difference is. You barely can even see anything here. So maybe if you had a darker background, you would want that. Dot color, and these dots are hard to see at, if at all right now. So let's go with something darker, and you can see right here, these are the three dots that we'd have in order to change from one slide to another. And then once you're happy, again, you can always just click Save up here to save this kind of feature. Now, there are a lot of different things you can do in here. You can actually use text. You can add buttons. You can also add videos within these sliders. There's a lot of flexibility with these sliders, and that's something that I really like about it because sometimes there's some compatibility issues with making things line up or making things um, fit. Like video sliders or video backgrounds can be a real pain sometimes depending on a theme or the builder that you're working within. So it's pretty nice that they have an easy feature that you can just add and then go to um, basics and add a video right in here, just as well as an icon, an image, a button, whatever you want. You can add text with links. You could add anything in here. So the fact that you can add a video pretty easily and have something up there quick is really nice compared to what a lot of builders have out there. So I'm going to, again, just go through and delete this whole section here, this whole slider, and be left with this blank canvas where I'm going to go over the next part here and that is gradient features. So what we're going to need to do to add this gradient background here is we're going to have to go to where it says add and then section. We're going to have at least a section here to be able to do this. And then we'll go to where it says advanced background. And then in this section, we can scroll to the bottom and we can find where it says gradient, which is a new update, which I really love. So this feature is something that you can really manipulate the site and how it looks overall and the feel to it. I think it gives it this cool look that you can use and you can do this by basically adding a color right here and you choose your first color and then let's just say we're going to do red here. I'll make it a little bit different color red and then after that you can add a second color by clicking add color and then let's just make this one a totally different color and I'll make this one like a bluish color. So it goes from this red to blue. And now if we scroll down and make this a bigger section here, we can see a lot more of how this looks. And then we can choose if it's going to be radial, if it's going to be linear. You can see this transition. When I have the mouse over, it looks like purple. But if not, you can see it goes from red to blue like that. And you can change the color to look differently. So it might look better if it's something like purple to this blue. And it looks pretty cool, I feel like, when you can add these different gradients in 
to give your site basically a whole new feel to it. If you have this like as the background of a page, it kind of gives a little bit more of excitement. And then right down here, you can choose an angle that you want it to come from. So if you want it to come from a side angle or from a corner in, in particular, you can do that as well. And this is something I really like because I was actually doing this with Divi the other day for one of my friend's websites that he had that he wanted some changes made on. And I honestly think this is a little bit easier to manipulate than Divi was in that regard. And I remember like a year ago or so when Themify was a little more popular, I think, maybe two years ago. This was like one of their big differentiators that they had this gradient feature in it. And now it's become a lot more popular. And I think this is easier to work on and manipulate than both Themify's is and Divi's is. So it's really cool to have this feature enabled. And it's something that I was just using the other day. So I wanted to make sure to talk about it in this video. So that's where I'm going to leave off and kind of wrap things up. Now I did want to just go over some things in summary. I want to say that the global color options should save you a lot of time and it's something that I'm really glad they added. It's nice to see that there's a lot of things being cleaned up by the SoFly team in such a short amount of time. I only did this video a couple months ago about their 2.0 release and a review on that and they've already updated a lot of things. You can see what they've updated if you go to that link within the Facebook page they talk about what the updates were and some of the upgrades and I only covered a couple things here there's actually like five more different major updates that they've done in the last couple months now I will say one of my only gripes with it is that they didn't add more of these templates and I really wish they did if we go back here to oxygen home here we can actually go and see different templates in here and they haven't added anymore if you click install a different website they're going to give you different options as well in here but there haven't been any major upgrades in this section in my opinion it's pretty much what we had before last time as far as I can tell and I really think this is the direction that we're going in with these builders if you look at Elementor has they focus on a plugin but then you have like Astro sites that has all these templates made Divi has layout packs there's all these ones that are focusing in this direction now I will say I think that they're really focusing on working on their builder and trying to make their builder as good as possible because they've done a heck of a lot in the last few months and I can tell they're really putting in hard work on that and maybe once they feel like the builder is in a better place and where it needs to be then they're going to make more of these different templates or design sets that we can use and work off of. So I also wanted to say I really like the flexibility of the slider where you can have basically unlimited possibilities as well. And I think that's going to be a big differentiator in them compared to some other themes and how easy that is to actually use because it just is a click of a button you can put a video in and link it. You can click of a button, put an image in, resize it if needed. It's so easy to use. So that about wraps it up for me. I really want to thank the Oxygen Builder team of SoFly for reaching out to me about this video. This again was a sponsored video and again they also have their own YouTube channel here on YouTube where they have other tutorials as well where they might go a little bit more in depth so I highly recommend checking them out in the Facebook group and thanks for watching everyone have a good one